Validate Flow, which is a new verification tool for uh, GStreamer. A bit about me, I work at Igawi, which is an open source consultancy, and we have lots of areas we work on, but uh, one of them is multimedia, and we do lots of uh, work in browsers, so I'm there at the intersection working in the media source extensions implementation for WebKit in the GStreamer based boards, and in doing so, and sometimes I hit use cases that are a bit off from the typical um, regular file playback, and I need uh, different approaches to testing. And this made me start this work to uh, make this a new tool. To put a bit on context, there are two approaches to, uh, currently, two main approaches to writing tests in GStreamer. On one side, there are the meson tests that are supposed to be unit tests are written completely in C. And the, the framework there is very simple, but also it's not very powerful. Uh, you have to do lots of things um, by hand. You just have the typical um, macros to define where a test starts, uh, assertions, and and that's it, and you work with that. There is GST Harness, which uh, simplifies creating the pipeline in some cases, which is nice, but th that, that's pretty much it. It's, it's good for uh, testing internals, but uh, a historical problem we have been in GStreamer is that not many people are writing these tests. Like, QTD Max has three tests in its, uh, its C test file, so that's kind of a problem. Uh, since a few years ago, we have GST Validate, which is a completely different approach, and the idea is not uh, unit testing, but integration testing, and it's uh, made by a C binary called GST Validate 1.0, which runs a pipeline and makes a series of checks, and a runner called GST Validate Runner that actually uh, invokes the other with lots of uh, combinations of parameters. And uh, the, this uh, validate yes, yes, tool is um, more attractive than the previous approach uh, for many developers because you just have to add f files that were failing previously and um, they will be uh, played in the CI and uh, you will get errors when something is, is going wrong. But uh, it's, it's more extensible than that, and c complex uh, use cases can be added through plugins or by modifying it a bit if, when, when it makes sense. So it's, for instance, also used for the uh, GStreamer ed editing service tests. And validate flow is also another pl plugin we are adding to GST validate. I'm talking a bit uh, more about Validate to introduce some concepts, and then I'll explain an example of Validate flow. So, a uh, Validate test uh, is it's just a series of parameters, one of them being the pipeline, the other being the config file or files, which uh, tell Validate 1.0 which uh, plugins to instantiate and with what uh, parameters and optionally and a scenario. Um, there is an environment variable to set a directory, um, a path with where you can find scenarios and um, a name of a scenario. If you specify one, that tells what you want to do with that pipeline. If you don't, it's just a play, a playback. Like, um, you have the, that pipeline, it's set to playing, and uh, if um, if it goes to end of a stream and there are nothing suspicious, the test is, is a pass. But with scenarios, you can test um, more complex use cases, like uh, wait until five seconds in playback and then do a sick uh, 10 seconds in the future and check that it actually seeks. Invoking GST validate is a bit more complex than it looks like, unfortunately, but <laughs> that's how things are. And, and the way it works is that every test in the launcher has a path that is a series of uh, names separated by, by periods. 
But the first one is a special, and it defines the test suite. The test suite is a Python file, and um, just the integration test suites uh, slash uh, test suites, if I remember correctly, I'm talking from memory. And there you can find uh, a Python file for every test suite. Validate is a default one. There are special ones for GES. There are another one that is the same, uh, does the same, does validate, but adds additional tests, etc. And um, <coughs> the, the rest of the expression is actually a regular expression, so you don't have to write every test that has ever existed. Instead, uh, you just put something like that, and this will run all the tests that uh, are of the kind uh, launch pipeline, which we will see next. But this is just an, uh, just as an example. Of course, you could put anything here. A test suite internally works by uh, declaring a series of generators, and generators, what they do is populate tests where each test is a series of parameters of the kinds that we specified before. So the most common one, uh, or, or the one that does most of the uh, execution time is uh, just evaluate play being test generator, which uh, just finds files with uh, media info and generates um, tests with different scenarios. But and then there is also the pipeline test generator, which uh, is kind of a, a middle ground. We're not adding files, but instead we have a JSON file where we can define our own pipelines and what scenario or scenarios we want to run on that pipeline. And that pipeline can, can be anything, whereas in the previous case, it, it could only be playing. This is uh, uh, a bit of generic information, something I, uh, I already uh, talk about it, but yeah, uh, playing tests uh, work by discovery. And the thing that Validate does in this, but also in other cases, is add monitors uh, using the, the monitor APIs in, in GStreamer to be notified uh, whenever something uh, flows in, in the pipeline and check for known error conditions like uh, mismatch in um, sequence numbers or uh, when you pull from the wrong thread and these kind of errors uh, are, are reported to the user in form of warnings or if uh, the developers consider them bad enough, they make the test fail. Generally speaking, these kind of tests are a smoke test. Uh, you play a file, and if it doesn't crash, if uh, it doesn't uh, render only zero frames, then th uh, things are considered to be fine. Of course, there's, there could be many possible bugs, but this already uh, catches uh, lots, of, lots of trouble is easily because uh, it tests lots and lots of files. So if you make a breaking chance, change by accident that breaks known, uh, previously known to be good files, there is a reasonable chance that this will catch it and tell you in the CI, which is something that we didn't have before and I'm very grateful for. <laughs> this is an example of an, a scenario. There are just text files where and there are a few, uh, first line of description and optional includes, but uh, the meat of the thing is these lines, where uh, you uh, specify some axon, uh, like seek. There is uh, a file where most of them are defined, gst value scenario c and it's quite readable. So uh, I recommend that if you want to make uh, advanced test with GST validate, actually look at that file and you'll see a list of uh, structures where all the possible uh, actions are defined and you can ask yours if uh, you find it necessary. But also, uh, plugins can also add their own actions. So if it's something that is not generic enough, 
you don't have to add it there. You can add it in applying by using the APIs. Mm, you could use, uh, look at body flow as an example if you want to see these APIs. <laughs> it's relatively simple. And this is how pipeline station looks like. Of course, I only paste <laughs> a small excerpt, but this should be quite exemplary. And it's a dictionary where the keys define the name of the test and the value define what um, are the parameters of that test. The most important one being the pipeline, which is mandatory. And then you can specify a scenarios or not. You can also specify in inline configuration with config, which we will see in a sample later for body flow. And the, th this makes also a, a smoke test, like in the previous case, but we are now able to, to use custom pipelines. Something that may call your attention is that there are a a Python string substitutions there in config path and audio sync. In the case of the latter, this is uh, because depending of whether you are using the mute flag, it will be fake sync or it will be audi uh, auto audio sync. So in, in, in some cases where you want to see what is uh, going on visibly or <laughs> hearing it in the test, uh, you can use a flag in and just the validate runner so that this is substituted to uh, an audible sync. And config path is just the path of uh, <laughs> the directory with and pipelines JSON is, which in this example we are using to locate a file. So when we are using, using validate flow, we are most of the time also writing pipeline tests like the previous one. But now uh, we can check what data flows through a specific path, path of, of our choosing. Whereas uh, before, we only knew that yeah, so some buffers flew, no error conditions were reported, everything should be good. Here we are uh, more explicit. Uh, we configure it by telling what kind um, of events and buffers we are interested in. And these are recorded. If you have ever uh, written WebKit test, this is very similar to test expectations. The, the first time you run the test, an expected file is created that has the, uh, um, the flow uh, that went through that path. And the next time you run the test, Another file, an actual uh, log file, is written that should contain the same information because you have run the same pipeline. But if a regression has occurred, the theory goes, then it will generate something different, and validate flow will uh, notice the difference and mark it as an error. Of course, <laughs> this means that uh, when authoring this kind of um, test, it's very important that they are reproducible. And if you break um, a validate flow test, you have to consider uh, whether it's an actual regression of maybe there was a double event that uh, one of them wasn't really important and it's actually fine. But the, the idea is to actually test that uh, elements emit exactly what you expect them to do. Here's an example of how it looks like. And this looks very similar to the uh, previous pipelines.json sample. But now we have a config. And uh, I, I'm not going to talk about the options here because they are in the documentation, but we can already see that there is some kind of filtering. Like, uh, f for instance, uh, sometimes uh, CAPS properties can be added, but um, like as a backwards compatible change. But maybe for our test, that's not important. 
So we can specify uh, which ones do we want. Similarly, sometimes we don't care about uh, buffers. We only ca care about events. And maybe our test uh, is not reproducible about the number of, of buffer it emits, depending on what is the behavior of the source. So we can also turn that on and off. And on the bottom, we can see how the actual un unexpected files look like. Here, <laughs> and obviously, if everything uh, was fine, they are the same. Something you can do is uh, write this code in pyflash.json, run the test, and then make a little tweak, for instance, changing number buffers to two instead of three, and you will get the failure with the diff. Then, we mentioned uh, scenarios before, and I have some uh, scenario actions. In particular, when you are testing the maxers, it's very in, uh, useful to have a source that you can control on your whims. An app source kind of fit the bill. So I add some actions to be able to use app source in, inside scenarios. The most important one is app source push, which not only enqueues a buffer inside app source, but also waits for app source to push the buffer. So you can write uh, reproducible tests more easily. Like uh, after the action, if app source was connected to a demaxer, you know that the demaxer has processed all the data that you push from the app source. Then app source AUS only set, uh, set it at end of stream, but um, one that is a bit related to what I said before is checkpoint, which is a specific of uh, of LDS flow. This is uh, a case of an action that is defined in applying, and what it does is writes to the log. The idea here being that uh, you can have two app source push or App source push event, app source push, and you can know which events and buffers are the result of which particular action. So that, for instance, there is no hidden delay in the demaxer. That uh, only after you receive some more frames, you receive frames that uh, you could have been emit in the past. Okay. Then another interesting action is a stop because uh, in some in some cases uh, I, I'm always working in media source extension, so this hit, hits me close. You are not supposed to uh, have an end of a stream, so if you just need to end the test, you can use that, and it's perfectly fine. This is a more complex sample using these actions, but it's. It, uh, it's not that complicated, really. And th this is actually testing some be behavior as I was working on some MSC stuff. And here we have a pipeline like before, but now we, uh, we, now we can use app source. And uh, we are using the app source axon, which uh, we tell what, what app source, what file, and something funny is that uh, we don't have to use the whole file, that we can specify an offset and a size. And what I'm testing here is that if I take this uh, chunk of uh, WebM file and I don't feed the demaxer the whole thing, and then I make a flash and then push something else, nothing breaks. And uh, the frames that uh, were in the first chunk were uh, the ones that were in their entirety were the max correctly, and so are the ones in the next uh, in the next chunk of data. And I can actually look at the timestamps and know that the maxer is not mangling them in any way or altering the continuity of them. So. For testing uh, 
the max and the max in cases this is quite useful and something you have to be careful though when uh, writing tests with app source is that by default but uh, validate weights for uh, for the pro role but uh, to run the actions I mean B but you need to actually send data to have a pro role so you have you have a chicken and egg problem, and there are two ways to fix it. Either you make your pipeline uh, have automatic parole or not parole, depending on how you think about it, by uh, setting a sync equals false in the sync, or by setting handle states in the uh, scenario to false, in which case um, the actions start running immediately without waiting for the parole. I am doing both things here, but only one of them is uh, is fine. And they are both here so that you know what you can do. Either works. And then to run the test is just just to invalidate uh, launcher and the full path of the test, possibly with role as person if you want to run a bunch of them. But there is a slight detail that I personally don't like. <laughs> and it's a fact that in a launch pipeline test, validate flow or not, when they don't have a, a, a scenario, they are inside launch pipelines dot pipelines dot test name, but when they have scenarios, they are in the launch pipeline dot test name dot scenario, which I think it makes more sense, and we should just remove the last part in in the second case. But yeah, uh, this has beaten me in the past, so that's why I, it's it's in this slide because it it gets confusing. <laughs> and if you want to actually write this using validate flow, my recommendation is to look at the documentation where all the uh, configuration options are explained. And uh, it also explains a bit more of the internal concepts. But hopefully this talk could have helped to give you an idea of what it is and what you can use it for. There are, of course, always <laughs> more things we could do. Um, me and Fibold are a bit annoyed about pipelines.json being a JSON file because it's kind of a read only language for humans. You are always getting the annoying trailing comma errors. So we, we may turn that into Python in the future. <laughs> and right now I am working on adding support for also recording messages. So in the case of uh, Playbin 3 with um, stream collections, serialize with the uh, stream collections events and and buffers. Uh, it, it could be interesting to log them. So that's something that I'm experimenting with. And that's it. If you have any questions. Thank you. If you have an application rather than a pipeline, application that builds a pipeline inside itself, so would you be able to test it as a black box, so to say, somehow test its output? So, oh, oh my god. <laughs> this is such difference in volume. Uh, you are providing the full pipeline here, but if you could somehow uh, load the elements from your application with applying? No, it's kind of inside the application, this pipeline. Maybe you could, uh, I don't know, start the application, start another pipeline that listens to it and monitors that. I, I, I don't know. The, th and the thing is that uh, these things are done by the Just Evaluate uh, 1.0 application, which is not intent to be integrated into other applications, but oh, here comes the author of Just Evaluate 1.0. <laughs> so yeah, you can integrate Just Evaluate inside your application. For example, in PTV, we have uh, all the, the scenario infrastructure. We use it. So you can, PTV is a video editing application. 
So we have uh, our own actions described, and then we can rerun it inside our application. So just evaluate allows you to just use it inside any application. And it will like, you can use those with your configs, you can do whatever you want. Just uh, evaluate one dot is just one tool. It depends. In the case of PTV, it's in Python, so you just like call the thing in Python. Any other question? There's a question there. Um, for the for the buffers, um, it just records the timestamps in the in the file. Or what the, what's the information that's recorded? Uh, it's recorded PTS, TTS, duration, and uh, I think there's an optional option for checksums. I don't remember exactly. I I think it is Con content checksums because it would be great to test debug uh, the decoders and that kind of thing. Yeah. I think there's an option for that, and uh, I'm talking from memory, but yeah, if it weren't, it would um, it would be the easiest thing to add. <laughs> but I think it's it's already there. You just have to enable it. Okay, so thank you. This makes the end of the talk.